Hey, what is going on guys, Danny here, and in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at AMD's Relive recording software. Earlier this month, AMD had released their new Crimson Driver 16.12.1 and had incorporated a recording and streaming tool, which works in a similar way as Nvidia's Shadowplay does. This was a piece of software many AMD users were demanding since the old recording or streaming solution, Raptor, didn't work so well for everyone. So now that we've finally gotten Relive, I thought I'd take a look at it and see how it works. Now for this video specifically, what I wanted to show you guys were some benchmarks I did using AMD's Relive recording software. My main method of recording has been using OBS with Intel QuickSync. This method of recording has always worked quite well for me, and one of the things I really liked about QuickSync was that it takes a lot of the load off your CPU and instead utilizes your iGPU for all the encoding. So the performance loss is quite minimal. One of the main claims AMD made about the Relive recording software was that it's lightweight, which therefore leads to minimal impact on gaming performance. So I, want, I wanted to put this to the test and see which recording method will attain performance relatively close to the performance I would get if I wasn't recording. So what I did was I tested 8 popular games, I did a test with no recording, I then tested with Relive, and then I tested with OBS using Intel QuickSync and then re recorded the results. All of the tests were recorded at 1080p using very high or ultra settings along with having things like motion blur and vsync disabled. My test system has an Intel Core i5-6600K which has been overclocked to 4.6GHz. Keeping the CPU cool, I've got a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO with two Corsair SP120 fans attached to it for a push-pull configuration. For the RAM, I have 16GB of G-Scale Ripjaws V-Series DDR4 memory clocked at 2800MHz. The motherboard is a Gigabyte G1 Gaming GA-Z170X Gaming 7. In regards to storage solutions, I have a Samsung 950 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD for the boot drive and two Western Digital 1TB hard drives, one of which is a Caviar Black and the other is a Caviar Blue. The get graphics card I'll be using for this test is an MSI RX480 Gaming X 8GB version. Powering the whole system, we have an EVGA 750W G2 power supply, and the case is a Corsair Spec 2. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's jump into these benchmarks and take a look at the results. Starting off with the Rise of the Tomb Raider, we can see that without recording, we obtain an average frame rate of 72.5 frames per second, and in regards to minimums, the lowest recorded was 43.8. When recording with Relive, the average frame rate was decreased to 69 frames per second and 40.7 for the minimum. That's a pretty small difference and even the minimums I had were still relatively close to the performance I had gotten when I wasn't recording. Looking at OBS with QuickSync, the difference is larger. The average frame rate decreases to about 66.1 frames per second, so that's about a 6 FPS difference and the minimums were impacted quite a bit as well. We're looking at about a 10 FPS difference here. So for this title, Relive has attained closer performance than OBS with QuickSync. Moving on to Hitman 2016, we see that without recording, we obtain an average FPS of 89.1 frames per second. The minimum we hit was 8.8 .8 frames per second, which is quite a steep drop, but that was mostly occurring during scene transitions, and not during the actual gameplay. Hitman 2016 shows us a similar scenario as Rise of the Tomb Raider. When recording with Relive, the average frame rate decreases to about 86.2 frames per second, which is only about a 3 FPS difference. On the other hand, OBS shows us that the average frame rate decreased by around 6 FPS while the minimums were tied. So Relive is still doing a slightly better job at attaining original performance. The results from the next game I wanted to show you guys are from Battlefield 1. Here we see that OBS is just edging out Relive by 1 FPS, and the minimums were almost exactly the same. A different result from the first two games we looked at. Taking another look at the minimum frame rate, we can see that the difference between no recording and recording with either method, the difference is only within 1 FPS. So that's good, you shouldn't notice any kind of stuttering or steep drops when recording and playing this game. Also when AMD had unveiled their relift drivers and recording software, in one of the slides you'll notice that they mentioned that the performance impact for Battlefield 1 is up to 4%. Looking at my results, the difference is only about 3%, and the minimums are within 1%, which does indeed line up with what they stated. So far, Relive is looking out to be a great recording method. Titanfall 2 is next on our list, and this game is no exception. The results we see here did not come as a surprise. 2 FPS difference from AMD Relive, and about 3 with OBS. AMD Relive shows us it had a higher minimum frame rate than OBS, a 4 FPS advantage there. 
Now, I'm not sure if you guys really want to call this a win for AMD's Relive. These are small differences, and they aren't like obviously anything huge, but hey, a win is a win, right? The next game is Total War Warhammer, and in regards to the average frame rate, similar performance differences can be noted here as they were observed from the previous titles. What's also interesting to see here are the minimum frame rates, where OBS actually has the highest out of the three, and AMD's Relive shows a significant impact on minimum frame rate. Moving on to GTA 5, without recording, an average frame rate of 63.4 frames per second was attained, and the minimum frame rate was 33.2. With AMD Relive, the average frame rate was 59.8 frames per second, and the minimum was 32 frames per second. OBS with QuickSync shows us a difference of about 6 frames per second, with the minimums also being lower at just 28.8 frames per second. So in Grand Theft Auto V, recording gameplay with AMD's Relived recording software will allow you to maintain performance relatively close to performance without recording. Moving forward, let's take a look at Doom running on the Vulkan API. Recording this game with OBS resulted in better performance for the average frame rate. OBS showed us a difference of 2 frames per second, whereas Relive has a difference of about 4 frames per second. However, the opposite can be observed in terms of the minimum, where Relive only has slightly one over 1 FPS, and OBS has a difference of 3 frames per second with respect to performance without recording. Regardless, either method should only have a very minimal loss on performance, so you can choose whatever works best for you. Finally, the last game I have on my list is Gears of War 4. I like to include Gears of War 4 in my benchmarks, as it is a very well optimized game and is one of my favorite personal titles. Anyways, this game separated itself from the rest of the titles by showing odd results when it came to performance. The difference between the average frame rate of not recording and using AMD's Relive is 26.3 frames per second, which by far is the biggest impact we've seen. Even OBS shows us a considerable decrease in performance, where most of the titles showed about a 3 or 6 frames per second difference, but here it's around 7.4. The gap is also just as big when we look at the minimums, where the difference from no recording and relive is 23.2 frames per second. This didn't really come to me as a surprise. I've always had issues with UWP games, whether it's Forza, Gears of War 4, or Halo Forge. I think the reason for this is the fact that these games don't actually run in a true full screen mode, but rather run in a borderless windowed mode. So unfortunately, both recording methods showed significant loss in regards to performance with Relive being the most impactful. After going through these games, testing with these two recording methods, and looking at the results, I was very surprised and impressed with what I had seen from AMD's Relive software. All the titles, with the exception of one, showed us that Relive is indeed a lightweight program which doesn't impact your gaming performance by a significant amount. I took all the results I had obtained and calculated the average differences of each recording program from the original performance I had attained. This was done for both the average and minimum frame rates. AMD Relive showed a slightly better all performance when compared to OBS. However, that's not to say that OBS performed poorly. Looking at the differences, we see an FPS delta of around 1 FPS. So really the performance losses from both methods is very similar. So whether you choose to use OBS or AMD Relive, both methods should work great in regards to attaining performance close to what you would originally get without recording. If you guys want, I can upload a side-by-side -side comparison video of some gameplay if anyone is interested, so let me know in the comments. I'm pretty happy that we finally got an in-house recording and streaming solution from AMD that works well. So going back to what I said earlier, you really wouldn't go wrong with choosing either method. If you prefer a versatile program, like to tinker with settings so they suit your needs, and allow you to add scenes, overlays, all that kind of stuff, then OBS is a great solution. AMD's Relive is also a great solution for those that just want a software that barely takes any time and effort to set up, and get you going. The replay buffer is also a very neat feature that allows you to capture a specific moment without actually recording your entire gameplay session. AMD's Relive, in my opinion, still has room for improvement, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Well guys, that wraps up my comparison between AMD's Relive and OBS. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. Let me know any questions or comments, and if you're interested in more content like this, then hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.